Time for one of my favorite days of the week, Strongman Saturday. I know what you're probably thinking. Strongman Saturday, free running Friday, what happened to Thursday? I'm gonna do a little bonus day to supplement uh, Thirsty Thursday. It's gonna be basically just all about nutrition um, and fasting and stuff like that. But for right now, just uh, do what you usually do on a rest day. Watch YouTube videos, learn how to do new tricks, learn how to do new calisthenic skills, etc., etc. Personally, I like to warm up with uh, tire flips, I guess is what you would call it. Um, these, the same maneuver, though, for a tire flip is used for car lifts, some of the other awesome strongman things. The basic idea here is that you're using your legs and your posterior chain, um, but the really big important thing to pay attention to is that you straighten your arms out. If, when you go to, to lift something, you have a really uh, strong tendency to curl it. Bicep tears are the most common strongman injury, so it's really important to do a good warm-up and not just do a good warm-up, but actually uh, Make sure you have good technique. You want to keep your arms straight when you're doing a tire flip or when you're practicing for a car lift. This is something that your arm is going to naturally want to do like a bicep curl so on this here. next circuit. And I am going to perform these as a circuit because with strongman, you want to do, instead of like with most of my workout videos, you're shooting for uh, four sets of 10. You don't want to do that with strongman. You don't really even want to do that with calisthenics unless you're training you're building your strength up for something. When you go to actually perform like a front lever, um, a one arm chin, anything like that, you wanna do like 10 sets of three instead of, you know, three sets of 10 or whatever. So one way to do that to keep from being bored or to keep from just standing around or whatever is you perform a circuit. So the strongman circuit is gonna consist of um, tire flips, or car lifts, whatever, it's the same technique, atlas stones, and circus dumbbells. You, after loading your hamstrings, you then reach down, grab underneath, either with this grip or with a spread finger grip, definitely not this kind of thing, uh, and then you're going to drop your butt. Dropping your butt sort of pulls the stone forward to go onto your knees, and then you have two options. And I think I showed both in these clips. You can either pinch your knees together, or you can uh, bring one of your legs in. You're going to set it as far forward as you can, and if it's not as far forward as it can go, then you're going to move it as far forward as it can go on your knees. Rest, take a breath, well don't rest, but take a breath, get another big belly breath, and then what you're going to do here is hinge your hips. So basically what this feels like is you've just dropped your butt down to get it onto your knees, now your butt's gonna go back and then up at a 45 degree angle to basically shove the stone up into a shoulder for this kind of uh, position. One thing you're gonna know the advice that I just gave you and I'm curling it. You don't wanna curl under an atlas stone. You wanna go over the top like this. Problem is with this particular atlas stone, it's flat and it doesn't go wide enough for me to be able to do that. So it, it stays pretty close in, and so I don't have a lot of options there with this particular stone. Got to work with what you got, you know. But as far as the technique goes, over the top, not this kind of thing at all. Bicep tears. So um, let's see. Next thing in the circuit is going to be a circus dumbbell. Circus dumbbell. The reason why I saved it for last as far as the strongman goes or today's strongman lifts go is because you've got to understand how an atlas stone works in order to do a circus dumbbell because the beginning of a circus dumbbell is the beginning of the atlas stone lift as well or the majority of the atlas stone lift is to get it to that position so basically uh, what you're going to do here is you're going to grab the circus dumbbell or stone or whatever it is that you're using and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tilt it, scoop it up. And then this is where that, that hinging of the hips that you did on the Atlas stone, same exact thing. Your hip, you load your hamstrings the same way, you hinge your hips, you throw it, and then you sort of uh, 
some people call it a power hump, whatever. You're throwing your hips forward to get it into this position. Once it's in this position, kind of a similar thing to the Atlas Stone too, in that that's sort of like a little rest and reset time, because now once you get it to that position, you're gonna move your shoulder into the correct position. And what I mean by the correct position is, whenever you, whenever you perform this lift, you're not doing this. Your, your arm shouldn't go down here. What's happening is, this part of your arm right here should never go lower and then up. This part of your arm should stay exactly where it is and extend, but it's not actually lifting anything. If you're performing this correctly, this isn't a tricep workout necessarily. Your tricep is, is helping, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is that you're going to move your hip over so that it's in a straight line going all the way down. Then you're going to drop down. And when you drop down, this is filling that space. So it's actually the dropping down that causes your arm to straighten out and get in the right position. It's gonna require shoulder strength. It's gonna require tricep st uh, strength just to continue pushing it through. But most of the actual weight that you're carrying, since it's gonna be a lot of weight, uh, most of the weight is actually going to come from that drop and drive. A couple of ways you can baby step your way into this. Uh, as I'm showing here, you start with a smaller stone. That's kind of obvious. Another thing you can do to kind of baby step your way into it is to uh, assist with your other hand. So you're dropping down, you're, you're holding it at three points of contact, your hand, your shoulder, your head. Okay, You've got it positioned in the correct position where this isn't going to move down only going to extend up okay well and you've got a small stone so you can practice your form all right now let's say you're trying to step up into a bigger stone but you, you don't want it to fall on your head <laughs> you can assist it with your other hand and try not to actually push with both hands try to just sort of balance it with the other hand drive up and then especially at the very top at the very top definitely have your hand away but uh, ideally you don't, you only want the hand here until you do the drive. But you can baby step your way into it and maybe start the drive with your hand on it and then pull it away and just get slowly better and better. Check out what I got for you. What a find. Small again, this is perfect for so many things. So uh, today we're gonna be doing some Tic Tacs. We're gonna be doing some wall runs because this is just perfect freaking wall. Okay, so. The very first place to start is with what you already know, which would be a box or, jump. The next step is going to be a uh, go ahead and practice the monkey vault again, or a slap and box jump, so it's something you know. And then we're going to put in a, a new move. So this is going to be a tic tac. The point of a tic tac is you use a wall to get yourself higher in the air. That's a normal tic tac that it's usually used. So basically, whenever you're doing this, it all comes from the knee drive. You're kicking the wall, true, but the reason why it looks like you kind of stick to the wall, your momentum going into the wall is what sticks you to the wall, but then you're going to go that way. So how do you go from sticking to the wall this way, momentum going this way, to going that way and up? Well, that's where that knee drive comes in, and that's going to be really important for the other things that you go to do anyways with the rest of these techniques. So, tic-tac, got that down, go over there, practice it. What's the, what's the next thing? A Euro step or a Tic Tac 180. The purpose of this is if you wanna go between two walls or you wanna go from one wall to a cat leap and you're assisting in that way, this is gonna be basically the technique that you wanna do. Is It's a Tic Tac and then a 180 degree spin in the air. It works pretty much exactly like you would think it works. Knee drive, then spin, that's it. Uh, but try to get yourself in the right position for your next cat leap or whatever it is that you go, you're going to do. So it's probably a good time to explain how to do a cat leap. It looks like it's a movie. You're running at a wall, or you're falling off a cliff or something, and then you jump and you grab with your fingers and you're hanging by like one finger. N no, all of that's totally wrong. It looks like you're doing that. But just like the monkey vault was a little bit of an illusion, this is the same thing. Actually, your feet are absorbing the impact and sticking to the wall because you're probably jumping off at quite a gap. 
So it's actually your feet that are absorbing and sticking and then your hands assist. That's the most important thing. Get your feet on first, then your hands. So that's pretty much it. Run at the wall, stick at it. To baby step your way into it, if it's weird, you can always crane. Stick one leg down. It's a good position to start from anyways because then if you're already in that crane position, instead of bringing your other foot up into the cat leap, you know, what's the point of that? Unless you're practicing your uh, tic-tac 180s maybe, or euro steps. What I say instead is, if you're gonna jump into a crane, you're in a perfect position to drive for a dyno, which is how you go from like a lower limb to an upper limb of a tree or set up for an angel flip or a lot of other cool stuff is uh, basically you're going to get into that cat leap crane and you're going to use your knee drive going up to get yourself higher up on the wall or to a higher position essentially. So you might as well practice that. You don't necessarily have to grab anything for right now. Just go flying through the air. It's fun. So once you've learned that, the next step is going to be kind of like a euro step. It feels, if you've already got that euro step down, and that 180, then you're going to understand it a little bit better than if you've been running straight at the wall, kicking it, and then coming straight back, or dynoing straight up, because you're going to want to come in at an angle. Specifically, the angle is 45 degrees. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically, you don't want to run straight at the wall. That's 90 degrees. You don't want to run against the wall, because that's zero degrees. You want to go halfway in between those two things. So it looks like you're just approaching it kind of cockeyed for the wall run. And then the easiest wall run is actually just to do a tic-tac off the wall and then continue going, but it's not really a thing to practice. You've already been basically doing that. So I just skip straight to the two-step wall run. The way to do a two-step wall run is your outside leg, the leg that's not facing the wall, is going to come across and connect first. So practice that with just one step, doing a weird kind of like cockeyed, weird tic-tac. Then throw that second step in. The way that works is you're stepping down here, coming in with the outside leg. Then you're bringing your inside leg just slightly above over here, and then you just kick off, just get away from the wall. Now, when you go to three step, which I'm not gonna show because you probably shouldn't attempt that just yet. When you go to three step, you gotta change that up a bit. It's actually your inside leg that goes first, and then after you're getting your first step with your inside leg, it's basically that, and then the thing I just showed you. Well, you already know the one step against the wall, that's just a tic-tac, and if you practice what I'm showing you here, then you're gonna know the two step. So then the next level will be putting those together. Instead of jumping right into that, just for right now, practice the one step and practice the two step individually and then you can always put them together later to do a three-step or to start working on your trinity flips and stuff like that.